commercial optics holders are expensive, so I made a holder and ring system using a laser cutter and some common hardware. The holes are threaded to take cap head screws, and these stick to magnets in the rings. This works pretty well. You can adjust the aim up, down, and left, right, and the ring doesn't slide around or fall off. You can put magnets in the holders for better stability, but most of the time these aren't needed. The kit lets you examine and prototype all the common optics functions such as projection, magnification, and even advanced laser effects, such as the Michelson interferometer shown here. You can make your own rings to hold the components you have, and the project has designs that hold some of the more common pieces. This one holds a laser, this one will hold a lens, This one holds a prism, and this one can be rotated. The clamp holder will hold flat pieces, such as a microscope slide or this polarized filter. So for example, two crossed polarizers will pass minimal light. but a third polarizer at 45 degrees will increase the amount of light. Which is a demonstration of quantum mechanics. Making the kit is pretty easy. The test cut panel lets you choose the right hole size for your magnets. Edit a local copy of the design files, change the magnet holes, and when you make the rings, the magnets press snugly into the holes and won't come out. Similarly, you can choose the right tab width for your acrylic and change the rectangles in your local copy. When you make the holders, the pieces will press together and they won't come apart. The holders and rings are easy to make. Snap together a few pieces and a drill gun makes quick work of the threads. They cost very little and can be made by a high school or hackerspace or anyone who has access to a laser cutter. The Project Wiki has more detail about assembly. Once you have the kit, getting optics is easy. Tell your friends and relatives that you're collecting optics and ask if they will give you their old film projectors, slide projectors, cameras, binoculars, and whatnot. These can be cut apart on a bandsaw to release the lenses or just mount the barrels in their own rings. You can also look on Craigslist, yard sales, eBay, and online surplus stores. We put some suggested links on the wiki. Whatever you do, don't tell your hackerspace that you're collecting optics. Seriously, this is a tiny fraction of the optics I got from doing that. <laughs> I'm now drowning in optics. Someone gave me five of these video cameras. For lens storage, you can get foam of varying thicknesses from the yard store, laser cut wells of various size, and glue them to heavy cardboard backing to make a sort of lens shelf folio. These fit snugly in the case and protect your lenses and foam wells. You can store a surprising amount of optics this way and the shelf layout lets you quickly find the right component. For younger students, we designed a set of lens profiles that can be used to teach the basics. Add a couple of line lasers and you can demonstrate a wide variety of optical principles. Of course, you can't do actual optics with these, but if you're careful, you can ray trace through three or four profiles to show how things work, such as this Galilean telescope or this Keplerian telescope. The full set contains 16 profiles and includes a selection of positive and negative lenses prisms in several orientations, and alignment guides. The profiles all fit in a single case folio shelf. Of course, you can make as many holders and rings as you want, but six holders, two clamps, and a folio all fit snugly in Husky branded carrying case for transport or storage. The system makes it easy to explore, experiment, and get a feel for how optics work. So if you have kids and you want them to learn a bit about science, consider making and giving them an optics kit.